I will always be with you to the end of time. Maritime Bay, being that classic beach town, was known to be a little, how do you say it, fragile when it came to storms. Little events such as rain would most of the times hurt the town, with tree branches breaking from trees, plants being destroyed, and the town becoming very dusty when the water dries up and leaves the dirt. Even when it got windy, somewhere in Maritime Bay, whether it be in the town or on the outskirts, a tree or some signpost would fall over, resulting in fixing and or in need of replacements. Today was no different. Not even close due to the storm from last night. Torrential downpour turned into a brutal storm, with high winds, lightning, thunder, and even hail at the end. This resulted in Maritime Bay looking very disheveled. But the town, being used to something happening whenever a raindrop shows up to the town, quickly took action. And Canterlodge quickly got its heavy equipment out to clear any fallen debris. The town was now still as the only sound was all of the town's ponies helping clean up. There was no wind, not even a breeze, only clear skies. With the integration of unicorns and pegasi, it made cleanup a lot easier. Being able to magically lift heavy objects was a lot easier than having seven ponies help hoist and monitor a massive crane to get the trolley back on the tracks, or a tree out of the way. With the sun now high in the sky and the town starting to make more noise, it caused two certain ponies, now newly lovers, to wake up. Pip opened her eyes slowly, met with beige fur and a little bit of aquamarine. Mitch. Pip smiled and tilted her head up, looking around the room that was mostly in the dark. She slowly grabbed her phone that was hooked under her wing to check the time. 9.40 a.m. Pip then took the opportunity to open her phone to see her notifications, noticing a message from Sunny. Delivered past midnight. Hey Pip! Zip got your message of where you are. I'm guessing you can see that it's really raining outside. Don't try to come to the Bright House, it'll be too dangerous. Text us when you two wake up. Pip smiled at the last part. The three mares knew that Hitch liked Pip for a while now, and always encouraged Pip to make something happen. Sunny often reminded her that Hitch is not one to make bold moves. He may seem like a confident go-getter, but trust me, if he really does like you, which he totally does, he'll never muster up the courage. Eventually, Pip told the girls that it was time she took charge. A great feature for her was that she was very confident. She had realized in life that you really just needed to take your chances. Don't worry about what others' reactions might be when talking to them or making decisions, or even how to live your life. It's her life, and she didn't tell others how to live theirs unless they asked for advice. On her social media, sure, she did have boundaries. She knew that the Cantronet could be a dangerous place to get easily cancelled on, but other than that, off social media, she was set loose. Hey, Pip. The sudden words surprised the pink mare, as she looked up to see Hitch staring back down at her. How long have you been awake? Like, maybe 15 minutes, give or take. Pip shook her head. And you didn't wake me? I didn't want to disturb you, and I was comfortable watching you sleep. It reminded me just how beautiful you really are. Hitch smiled when stating that last sentence. Well now, it seems that all of your nerves have gone back down to normal. For now, Hitch noted, causing Pip to chuckle. Are you hungry? Pip nodded. Hitch just smiled and decided to unravel himself from the mare, getting out of bed, putting his hoof out to stop her. Saying nothing to the stallion, he left the room, and Pip waited in silence, electing to go on her phone to go on Ponygram. The sudden smell of food being cooked filled her nostrils. Something cake-like in coffee. Oh, yum. After a few more minutes, Hitch came back with the tray on his back. On it were an assortment of things. Waffles decorated with strawberries and raspberries, a bowl of fruits, orange juice, coffee, a glass of pure maple syrup, oatmeal, and cereal with a glass jar of milk waiting to be poured. It looked straight out of a commercial on TV. Everything was organized and sorted accordingly. Hitch came to Pip's side of the bed, setting the tray next to her lap. So when Hitch re-entered his side of the bed, it would be in between them. He gave her a knowing look, as she looked like she was ready to drool. 
Dig again, Pip. Immediately, the mare did what she was approved to do and got the fork and knife and started towards the waffles. When the first bite hit her mouth, she realized it didn't even need syrup. Her eyes widened. Oh, my star hitch, this is amazing! She exclaimed with a mouthful of food. This caused him to laugh. I can't cook to save my life. Hitch took that as an opportunity to jab her. Well, I guess we have that sorted out on who's the better cook. Oh, har, har, Sheriff. Hitch took the cereal and poured some milk into the bowl and started eating himself. The two sat in silence, enjoying the food that the stallion brought, occasionally making eye contact and smiling. When Hitch was done with the cereal, he took the bowl up to his muzzle and drained the milk, with a little bit of it accidentally dribbling to the side of his mouth, causing a giggle to emit from his left. She took the opportunity to make an interesting move on Hitch before he could pick up a napkin. Giving him a seductive look, she leaned towards him, lolling her tongue out and giving the side of him a good lick, cleaning the stained fur, now milkless, replaced with the dampness of Pip's tongue. When she pulled away, she saw Hitch's face change. He was shocked at first, not expecting this from such a posh pony. And when he thought it couldn't get any more surprising, Pip suddenly had a very small yet cute burp. Light and almost silence. This caused her to put a hoof up to her mouth, eyes widening in shock, her face very visibly red for having a pink coat. Oops, sorry. Her ears were now flat against her head. A shy smile on her now. All Hitch could do was laugh, to which Pip joined. Finishing up their breakfast, Hitch put the dishes in the dishwasher, and they headed out. Their destination set to the Bright House. But when the two smiling ponies got outside, the town's condition had other plans. While most of it was much better than in the early morning, it still needed help. A big lead in the cleanup operations was Hitch. He looked over to Pip, who was looking around at all the debris. Uh, hey, go ahead of me. I'm gonna quickly make sure that everything is being taken care of. I should only be an hour or two, okay? Pip smiled at the stallion's commitment to being a worthy sheriff, and gave him a peck on the cheek. Don't be too long, okay? And stay safe. Hitch nodded at the last part. Of course. Pip took one last look before extending her wings out and lifting off into the sky, slightly startling the stallion from the sudden whoosh. Oh, that's gonna take some getting used to. He quickly shook it off, and headed to the main point of town, set to find any ponies that may still need a helping hoof. When Pip got to the Bright House, she saw that it was mostly cleaned up from the debris and flew to the main door. Opening it, she saw the three mares that lived with her in the house. They were congregating at the kitchen table, now directing their attention to Pip. They all smiled. Pip, you're back! Izzy exclaimed. How was your night with your new man, huh? Oh, nothing much is. But we did have an amazing breakfast. Oh, he can cook. The girls laughed at this. What's on your mind though, Pip? Now that all the dust is settled, how do you feel about this? Sunny asked. Pip knew Sunny meant nothing by it, wanting the best for both of her friends. Well, as we all expected, he was a mess in the beginning of our little hangout. I have to say, while I am sad we didn't make it here, I'm glad how it all turned out. Hitch is... just what I need, now that he's comfortable with me. I feel like I have no limits when I'm with him. He makes me feel safe to do and say whatever I want. No, oh, Pip, I'm so happy for you! Sonny said, giving Pip a hug. Just know this, Hitch is a very nice and loyal stallion. I know him down to a T, and he'll never let you down or betray you or do anything shady on you. You just need to make sure that you do the same and be your best you for him. I'm not saying that you won't, but I'm just telling you what to expect, which is nothing but the best. I know, and thank you, Sonny, for telling me that. You're right. I know Hitch would never do anything like that, and it's nice to hear it coming from you, being his childhood friend and all. Sonny smiled. Zip, on the other hand, had other plans. While she loved Hitch like a brother, she would defend him to the end of time and always be there for him. She knew that she needed to have a one-on-one -on -one conversation with him. As if on cue, Hitch briefly knocked and stepped into the Bright House, looking at the mares, smiling. Hey girls, what's good? Pip turned, smiling. Hey there, Sheriff. 
she said in a soft tone, biting her lower lip for a split second, causing the stallion to become a bit embarrassed. <laughs> it's just the stallion I need. You think you could help me with something at the edge of the outside of the Bright House? Zip asked immediately when she got the chance. Better now than never. Uh, yeah, of course. When going outside, Zip instantly cuts to the chase. Okay, look, I'm really glad that you and Pip finally decided to take your relationship up a notch, but I just need to give you a fair warning. You know, classic sibling talk, uh, Pip may seem very posh and forward and confident, but let me tell you, she was not all that before you and Izzy came into the picture. All she had was her fans and the Candronet. She never really talked to her fans directly, but one day, she decided to look into her DMs because I upset her. Zip was silent for a few moments, her head hung in shame. Her ears were low, a pained look on her face, attempting to hide it from the sheriff. Hitch, being trained to notice changes on the fly, noticed immediately. He was going to apologize, wanting to tell her that it's not her fault, that it's in the past. And clearly Pip forgave her. But Zip finally continued. When scrolling, she saw the usual, Hey, how are you? I love you, Pip. Pip, Pip, hooray, the classics. But there was one thing that caught her attention, that wanted to make sure that she was okay. Same age, stallion, good looking, good reputation. Unfortunately, she fell into his trap. Responded, started talking to him, and things took a turn for the worst. Long story short, he asked her for... inappropriate photos. She almost did send them, but luckily she went to mom because of how mortified she was with herself, and got the situation dealt with. Hitch didn't know what to do while listening to this. First, why was Zip telling such sensitive information? Was she trying to scare him? Also, why was she suddenly acting like he was a threat? Maybe she wants him to know that she'll always be there to protect Pip? And lastly, who was this stallion? Hitch knew that he would gladly break the law and dishonor his badge to teach whoever this cult thought he was a serious lesson. Not just because it was Pip, but because in a way, it was sexual harassment, to which the law had zero tolerance for. As if she could read minds, Zip continued with a look of reassurance. Don't worry, Hitch. The stallion was dealt with, fined, given a restraining order, and restricted from attending or being near any government gathering or building of Zephyr Heights unless it was the city hall. I don't mean to upset or scare you, but let me explain. Pip, ever since, has hidden that away and has become a more outgoing pony. Being more of a flirt, not afraid to make others uncomfortable. It took her so long to come back around to being her normal self before even becoming near the way she is now. If they can handle her attitude towards them, then they're good in her book, which has proven to work, oddly enough. What I'm saying is, don't hurt her. Because if something happens, I don't know if she'll ever be the same. I know you aren't going to, but seriously, if you don't think you can handle this, or see yourself with Pip forever, then don't go through with it. Call it off right now. They stared at each other for seconds, feeling like minutes. Zip then put on a very serious and intimidating angry look. And don't you ever think that I won't interfere if something goes wrong. I don't care whose fault it is, yours or hers, I can't see Pip like that again. Hitch finally spoke. I'm not going to abandon Pip. I wouldn't have gone into a relationship with her if I couldn't see her in my life to the end. Zip eventually relaxed her face. Okay, bud. I believe you. Thank you. I trust that you won't go back on your word. She really does adore you. You know that? Zip started to turn around to the Bright House. But as quickly as she did, she turned back around also suddenly mentioning a fact that Hitch also thought about. Oh, don't forget. Pip is the most famous and well-known pony in Equestria. She has higher status than me and my mother combined. Be ready to be a lot more popular when others find out. Hitch chuckled. Yeah, I thought about it. Worth it. His simple response got a laugh from the Snow White Pegasus. You do also know that Pip has fangirled about you for a while, right? This statement stopped Hitch in his tracks. He felt like he already knew that. But hearing it from some pony else? Really? Zip nodded. Yeah, she couldn't stop talking about you. 
She always wanted to just keep talking and talking about you, to the point where I had to bring something else up just to force her to think about more than one thing. This caused a laugh from the sheriff. Zip kept going, further resulting in Hitch's laughter. Sometimes she'd talk about you for so long, when it was just me and her at dinner, that I had to remind her to continue eating her food. Wow, that's great. <laughs> what also really got me was the time we were at the noodle shop in town for lunch, and you shut up for a lunch break, I think. Hitch nodded enthusiastically, remembering. Oh yeah, I was on break, yes. It was just you and Pip at the time, correct? Zip nodded. Yep. Of course, she had mentioned your name a couple of times while we were eating, and she saw you walk by. You hadn't seen us yet, and she flipped out. She literally told me in a whisper to act normal, as if I wasn't already, and of course, she failed miserably, slurping her noodles in the loudest way possible. I remember not only did I get your attention, but the entire shops too. Both ponies bursted out laughing at the expense of the princess. Wow, I did not know that Pip was so all over the place about me. Yeah, well, like I said, she really has her act how you want and don't care what others might think, and if they can handle it, then they're good attitude. But a few times when it came to you, she just lost it. Zip was now smiling at Hitch, as he smiled brightly at the last part of what she had mentioned to him. As Zip turned back around, Hitch followed her to the main doors to the right house. And when getting back through said doors, the two ponies saw the other three on the couch talking. Hearing Hitch's name told him that they were gossiping. When they joined, Sonny decided to put Hitch on the flame. So, Sheriff, care to explain anything? Actually, I want to know how you guys figured it out with Pip. Hitch butted back, Uno reversing Sonny's question. Sonny decided to answer Hitch's question, but she wouldn't go down without a fight, adding a bit of spice to her answer, as it wasn't supposed to be her on the hot seat. Well, you acted so much differently with Pip around. Often directing your conversation towards her, standing with her, helping her, and always lending a hoof when needed. It started becoming obvious. Your mood was always a little brighter with Pip, or whenever you were doing anything that involved her, always laughing with her, or, I don't know, being more gentle with how you acted and talked, if that makes sense. Oh, and also, I may have looked into your search history on Ponygram when you left your phone on when you went to go use the restroom one time. The last part got Hitch. I really need to remember to turn off my phone when I put it down. <sighs> okay, well, since you answered my question, I'll answer yours. I... I really can't describe my attraction towards her. Sure, there's definitely a physical attraction... I've never seen a pony so beautiful in my life before you, Sonny. This caused Sonny to embarrassingly look away. I just love the fact that Pip is so smart and loves to be playful yet serious. Fun yet organized. She's outgoing and a little bit reckless, but also self-sufficient. She has her whole life together, better than me. Even if she says otherwise and disagrees. She checks all of the boxes and more. She's truly a vision to me. The last part got every pony's attention, getting an awe from Sonny and Izzy. Hitch literally just poured his heart out on how he felt about Pip. Maybe that storm was really a good thing after all. So, what now? Izzy asked. What do you mean? Pip responded back, wondering what that meant. After all, with Izzy, it could mean a million things. Does that mean you'll move in with Hitch? Hitch was about to respond, but Pip answered first. Well, eventually I would assume yes, but as Hitch mentioned, we're gonna take it slow. So no, I'm gonna stay here until Hitch feels comfortable. She concluded. Hitch couldn't have said it any better if he was being honest with himself. Yay! Pip stays with us! Izzy shouted, causing all the other ponies to laugh. A sudden ring from Sunny's satchel went off. Her phone. She pulled it out, seeing the time. I better get going to my smoothie stand. I'll catch you guys later, okay? Every pony nodded. Yeah, I better get going too. I gotta meet my mom for some royalty training. Zip said, slightly straining on her words. Ooh, that reminds me. I'm gonna go to the local shoemaker to see if anyone can help construct a little kitty pool for us. Izzy chirped, flying out of her seat before trotting to the door. All said their goodbyes, waving off. 
This left only the two newly Colton Philly friend couple to themselves in the Bright House. Well, Hitch, what do you want to do? Pip asked, turning towards Hitch, walking up to stand next to him. Well, first, let me say that I'm happy that you want to take things slow. It's very mature of you. Pip blushed, ears slightly lowering with a smile on her face. And by the way, I know this isn't slow, but I've already made my mind up. You can stay with me whenever you want. And whenever you're ready to permanently move in with me, just let me know. They stood there, happily looking into each other's eyes. As for what we should do now, I'm not too sure. But whatever we decide, we're gonna have fun doing it together. Hitch concluded, making a move and leaning down to tenderly kiss her, who welcomed the kiss without a single notch of hesitation. That was so sweet. You just gotta love romance and its little cute sappy moments. Anyways, let's get on to our confident donators. Top donators are 630, Badass Waffle, Only One Thing, Subaru Orion, and Iron Sky. Darkside Raiden, Narwhals, Black Moon, Heart, Pastel Skies, Austin Rowland, Stu Hex, Sword Brother, Marjorie, Omicron, Lyrae, Rune Siphon, NA52, Will, Chris, Twinkie, Ride, Soul, Shadow Moon, Luigi, AA, Chancellor, Crust, Big Smoke, 369, Jesse Smith, Bobcat, GGF, and many more amazing people. Thank you all so much for watching this video and live life to the fullest.